Hey, hey, everybody. What is up, everybody? Let me make sure I get over to the comments. I hope everybody is doing well. All right, let me make sure I'm in. Let me know. Can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? Um, This is so bright. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. It's like hella bright. <laughs> okay. All right. That was better. Oh my God. That was like in my face, all crazy. So um, I wanted to drop in and give you guys some information about um, audiobook narration. That's what we're going to cover today. Um, I want to make sure I have, I actually have some images for you guys. So I want to pull this up. I want to make sure this is all straight for you. Um, let me know in the chat where you guys are tuning in from and let me make sure I have, okay, here we go. I'm like looking for the button that I need it. All right. So yeah, so I know a lot of people were interested in audiobook narration. As a matter of fact, it is the most popular thing here on my channel. So I wanted to give you all the opportunity to actually learn more about it. Okay. So, um, I'm like, what is that sound? Um, wait, let me know if y'all can hear me. If, if somebody could please drop a comment and let me know if you can actually hear me, I would appreciate it. Um, cause otherwise it's not going to benefit you if you can't hear me. Okay. So the thing is, um, audiobook narration is something that I've gotten into since 2020. And so for those of you that are subscribed to the channel, then you already know that, you know, I auditioned one time back in 2020 for an audiobook. I had no experience with audiobook narration. As a matter of fact, I hadn't even heard of it until minutes before I auditioned, basically, because uh, when I found out about it, I'm like, let me jump right in. Let me audition. Let me not talk myself out of it. So I took that leap of faith and here I am. Um, so what ended up happening was I, when I did that one audition and we'll, we'll cover it, um, about like audition, the audition process and all of that. But when I did my audition, I submitted it, really didn't expect anything. Hi, Hey, I see you. I see you. Um, sorry if I mispronounced it, Akita. Um, but yeah, so it was, you know, I just put in for my audition and I didn't expect to hear anything back. And I did. So I nailed that first audition. And then the author, she actually liked my um my voice so much. And ironically, I never did care for my own voice. <laughs> But um, but she liked it so much that she asked me if I would do another audiobook for her. So I ended up doing that audiobook. And then from there, she asked me to do way more. And so I ended up now I'm on my fifth audiobook narration contract. And it's from that one audition. So I always like to tell people, like, you never know what's going to come come from narrating audiobooks because like I said, I had no clue that I would actually have any success with, with audiobook narration. Um, I'm trying to pull up this webinar for you guys. So just give me a minute. Um, let me make sure I, I'm not neglecting anybody. Hey, JT, what's up? Oh, I appreciate you. Super chat. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and thank you. Um, sorry if I, if I mispronounce it as well. Um, Sayana, I see it. Um, my audio is fine. Thank you so much. And you are from Cali. Shout out to Cali. But JT, my man, I appreciate you. So um, yeah, JT Coin Rings, he's a subscriber of mine that we actually we we became cool. So y'all will, you know, we we have it in the works. JT, I'm not telling too much, but um, but yeah, uh JT and I, we we y'all gonna see us linked up pretty soon. So, um, yeah, so shout out to JT. I appreciate him. Um, make sure y'all go check out his channel. Like the things that he can actually turn coins into rings. It's crazy. And, you know, so I follow him on IG and here on YouTube. So he was my subscriber, but now I'm his subscriber and I'm a fan. So yeah, I appreciate you JT for that. 
And, um, but yeah, so about the audiobook narration. So again, I, I didn't expect anything, but I did get those five contracts from it. And um, so the thing is, there is a website that in order to audition, you should go to, and it's called ACX. So um, <laughs> I see Akita says, I don't, wait, wait, wait let me, let me post this. Uh, it says, I don't like my own voice either, but would like to try it. I, I have a Southern accent sometimes. It's, it's so funny that you mentioned that. Um, so we're going to get into that, like the accents and stuff. We are going to talk more about that. But ironically, um, two, two of the books, two of the books that I've done so far require me to have a Southern accent. I'm like, um, I'll try my best. <laughs> so that's the thing, like, when it comes down to it, it's like you might be asked to do different accents and things like that. So um, and the thing is, it might not even be um, like said up front that they are asking for this particular type of accent, because I didn't find out about that until um, until I was actually doing the audiobooks. Like I had already had contracts and everything before I found out that a Southern accent would be needed. Um, but I am going to show you guys, there are um, filters to be able to filter for um, for the different uh, accents that are needed um, in audiobooks. So different authors might, you know, it might be a book that is based in Paris, you know, like they might need some some sort of European accent or, or something or English accent, something like that. So you never know um, what you're like. There's no limitations, basically. So, you know, just because you have an accent does not mean that you would have less of a chance of getting it, because what that does is that sets you apart from people that don't have that quality. So I always like to say, like, you never know. Um, until like you actually get into it that, you know, you are unique, you know? And um, so hold on one second. I'm like, so trying to pull this image up for you guys. And let's see what this one is. So I'm actually, I'm trying to pull up the, these slides for y'all, but the images, I don't, I'm trying to get my gallery up. Okay. That's helpful. Okay. So um, I'm actually, cause so you guys know, like I have, um, a get paid to narrate masterclass. So I do, um, cover this more in depth as well as, um, if you look at the link at the bottom under this video, and if you're on mobile, you might have to expand the description, but, um, I have an audiobook narration course where I do coach my students in the course. So um, that's actually on sale. Today is the last day. It's actually going to expire in a few hours. But um, I'm trying to make sure I get this up for you guys. All right. So, all right. So this is um, one of the slides. Like I said, this is going to be like a crash course, <laughs> okay, um, that I have for you guys. But... Let me see. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you so you can get it. Um, but yeah. Oh, OK. So let me put this in. All right. Hold on. Give me a minute. I'm going to upload this file so it's like more seamless for you guys. But um, but in the chat, while I'm pulling this up, do me a favor and let me know if there are like if you had any questions about audiobook narration in general, um, because once I start going, you know, it might be a little harder for me to um, be able to stop and answer the questions. So I do want to um, make sure that you guys do get your questions answered. Let me see. Come on. Where's my webinar? Okay. All right. Got it. So, um, but yeah. Um, so when it comes to the audiobook narration, there is like, an idea that a lot of people have that you have to have some sort of experience and you do not have to have experience. Like I, I want to like actually drill that home for you guys like that. You don't have to have any experience. You can get into audiobook narration, like just on your first try, just like I did. So, you know, don't be discouraged with the fact that you don't have any experience with that. Um, so Okay, here we go. Get paid to narrate 
webinar. Um, but yeah, so, all right, sorry y'all, but okay, I see. Um, Akita says, what type of equipment do you use? Um, the microphone. Ironically, the microphone that I'm using right now, it's a Shure MV51. Let me turn around. I don't want it like clicking in y'all ear, but this is the Shure MV51. And this is actually available. I have it linked down below. Like I have a Amazon store. So on my Amazon storefront, I have a, um, what they call an idea list. And in that idea list, like I have a bunch of idea lists. One of them is strictly audiobook narration. So, um, so definitely check that out. Again, the link is below this video. So all you have to do is, um, click that and it'll take you over to my Amazon store so that you can find the short MV 51 as well as, cause I'm going to be honest with you. The short MV 51 can be a little expensive. Um, they run about $300 depending on which, um, which version you get. Um, so, you know, I do in the, uh, in the idealist, I have other ones as well. So, you know, so you can check that out. Let me see. Uh, and the thing is like, that's why I like Amazon because they have like bundles where you can check out the bundles. And then um, like when you like check out the bundles, of course they take you down that rabbit hole. We all know how Amazon works, right? So um, yeah, when they do that, you can, you know, compare them side by side and all of that. So that's why I always suggest Amazon. Like that's where I get, pretty much all of my stuff. And um, yeah, so just so you know that, and let me, you know what, I'm just going to re-download this thing because this is just insane that it is not uploading for me. So just get in y'all, bear with me. Um, also, if anybody else has any questions, feel free. My computer is so delayed. I swear it's not me. Like my computer is so delayed. So I'm trying to pull this up and it's like just being a real, real pain. So what I'm about to do is because it's being so slow, I'm about to just, um, just pull this up another way. All right, here we go. Cause it's like, oh my goodness. So yes. All right. So that's going to download and then I'll be able to upload it into the live stream. So um, cause I wasn't going to do like the slides. And then of course, last minute, I decided to do the slides. So that's what I'm getting done now. I'm trying to, um, get these slides in here for you guys. Um, let me get to, okay. I see another question. So hold on. I'm just starting that upload. Okay. It's uploading. All right. So just in a minute, y'all going to hear the slides. Um, so it says, um, Miguel junior 501. I'm going, I'm going to start auditioning for books soon. Do you need headphones? You don't need headphones, but if you have headphones, it will make basically make your experience better. So let me explain. So um, these, I, I have my headphones, I happen to have my headphones right here because I'm actually actively narrating a book right now. So um, these are my headphones. These are um, Philips headphones. Again, they're in that idea list on my Amazon page, but I've gone, every time I've narrated a book, I have had headphones. And the reason why it's really important to have the headphones, even though you don't have to have them, but it's really important to have them because when you're listening and it's right there at your ear, you will hear more than you would with the sound just coming out of your computer. So for example, you might hear like really lower sounds that, that wouldn't necessarily you know, stand out to you in the computer. So um, for example, I have neighbors with dogs, right? So there are times when I'm narrating and I don't even notice that there's a dog barking, like that you can actually hear a dog barking in the background because I'm so used to that sound, right? But then when I play my clips back, I can hear that dog barking. Like you can literally hear me talking to you. Okay. Like, all right. You know, so this is, you know, it's really important to have the headphones because you will hear more in the headphones and it will basically help put you in the shoes of the person that would be buying your audiobook. Um, because people are listening a lot of times with earbuds, you know, so you're talking about the earbuds are like, you know, a millimeter away from your eardrum. So you want to 
you know, basically give them a seamless experience when it comes to listening to your audio book. So yeah, definitely, you know, um, listen with headphones. And also sometimes you never know, um, there might be like a little hissing in there or something that you wouldn't necessarily catch coming from the um, computer. And another point on that. So, and I never, I never mentioned this, but um, I moved earlier this year and I am in the vicinity of radio towers. So I have a very unique problem where I even called the companies, right? I called my microphone companies and it, not even this microphone, but as a matter of fact, it was a short, it, it was my uh, camera microphone for when I'm recording my YouTube videos. So an issue that I have um, is that when I'm recording the nearby radio stations, will actually filter through my microphones and being that and um and you know what now I'm thinking about it nobody has complained about that so you know I can't hear what you guys are hearing hopefully y'all not getting any like urban radio coming through <laughs> cuz that's actually what happens so um a lot of times that's why you know there were times where I had to record one um YouTube video cuz it was a sponsored video I had to record it five times because I could hear the radio station coming through. So that's something that I have to deal with when it comes to my audiobook narration lately is that the radio station is actually coming through my microphones. And again, I have a unique problem. Most people don't live that close to a radio station where it would affect their recording, but it affects all of my devices in here. Anything that will require recording, un unless it's like my cell phone, but anything, especially my microphone, I'll show you this. Um, my microphone is on a stand. So this stand is, you know, just one of many stands that I have. So even when I'm recording for uh, my YouTube videos, I have like a larger stand, like for overhead mic. These stands are metal and now they act as antennas. So it's making the sound stronger to the point where sometimes if I'm recording, you can't even hear my voice. You just hear maybe pop smoke coming through. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, long story short, Definitely use headphones. Um, uh, let me see. CJ Sales says, do you use an agency to acquire jobs? No, I do not. Um, so I'm not sure if you you heard the beginning. So um, I auditioned one time and I got my first audition. I did it myself on a website called ACX. So, and I'm going to show you that. So finally, I got my stuff uploaded. Here we go. So let me let me scroll through. Let me get you to the right page before we even do this. All right. Um, but all right, here we go. Da, 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 da. Okay. So I'm trying to like cut out the fluff here. I want to actually get you guys all the, okay, here's one. Okay. So, um, one thing that I wanted to point out is that when you do audiobooks, um, they are on multiple platforms a lot of times, and we're going to get into like the sound requirements and stuff. But um, that is the reason why your the, the sound requirements are so strict. Because in case you don't know it, in case this is your first time like learning about audiobook narration, the sound requirements are very, very, very strict. I cannot stress that enough. Okay. So that's the one thing that basically makes or breaks people. Um, so that, you know, that's one of the main things like when I cover it in my course um, is, you know, so my course, it comes with coaching. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I actually get to find out like what other people are going through as well. And that is always the main thing when it comes to um, my students in my course is them having, you know, questions about the sound requirements and making sure they meet those sound requirements. So um, yeah, so these are the audio books, um, the three that are out right now. Um, I'm actually finishing up my my fourth one and then I have a fifth one so I never did a video like formally announcing it but yes I got my fifth audiobook narration contract when last time I did a video about a new contract it was when I got my fourth contract but yeah so secrets out I have five narration contracts from that one contract so um the three that are out right now those are the ones billion dollar betty the first one the second one and then little red rider which is actually pretty much in mixed up order because Little Red Rider was my first one. And then I did um, Billion Dollar Betty and Billion Dollar Betty too. So, um, but yeah, so let me cut to this question while I have a chance. 
And okay, so Miguel Jr. 501 says, thanks for answering my question. Also, I, I work full time right now. Would you recommend I start off with shorter books? Um, so the thing is like, you don't have to do shorter books. I mean, if you can find shorter books, have at it. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you, especially it's a great way to get your feet wet when you do go for the shorter books. And that's what I always, I, I try to, uh, la, la, la. I try to let people know to not, um, like skim over like shorter books, like such as poetry books or even children's books. Um, there's one student in my course and she is getting it. And this lady is like really killing it. Like she actually just sent me some professional samples because she works with multiple people. And um, so she is, I, I suggested to, to her that she does children's books and she happens to be a school teacher. So I'm like, yeah, like definitely that's, that should be one of your go-tos are the children's books. Um, but yeah, the shorter books are really, really helpful to like get your feet wet when it comes to um, like the whole auditioning and not even just auditioning, but especially for the editing process, you don't have all that much audio to edit. Um, but also you can do more books in a shorter time frame. but I'm telling you, even with the shorter books, you're still likely, you know, especially if you, you've never done the editing before, it's going to take some time. It's going to be a learning curve in order to learn about how to edit the stuff. But on another note, yeah, like it's good to do the shorter books, but at the same time, even with the longer books, people don't realize how long you have to be able to finish those books. So for me, um, there like there are two deadlines. Let me put point that out. Let me get some water. Hold on, y'all. So there are two deadlines to point out. And once you get a narration contract, the first deadline is going to be your 15 minute checkpoint. So say if you auditioned, you got this contract, you're like, I'm in, you know, so they're like, okay, go ahead and start narrating that book now. So once you do that, that's when they say you have X amount of time to put in a 15 minute checkpoint. So a 15 minute checkpoint is you doing approximately 15 minutes of that or recording 15 minutes of that book. For me, um, that typically evens out to about one chapter in the book. So I'll typically read the first chapter, record that, and then send that in as my 15 minute checkpoint. And the website that I'm talking about, y'all, just in case you don't know, is ACX. It's ACX.com. So they're owned by Amazon. I'll get into that in a minute. But um, you're going to upload that 15 minute checkpoint to ACX. And then at that point, that 15 minute checkpoint, you have to have the sound requirements straight. All your stuff has, all your ducks have to be in a row. Okay. So with that 15 minute checkpoint though, even though it's a 15 minute recording, trust me when I tell you, especially if you were new, you're going to need way more than, 50, you know, like, of course it's not going to be 15 minutes because you're going to make mistakes and you're going to have to edit. You're going to have to do all of that stuff. But you might take weeks to do it, especially if you are working, right? You have another job, you have other obligations. I'm a single mom. Trust me, I get it. So that's the reason why for the 15 minute checkpoint, mine are typically about a month. So the author gives me a month to put in that first 15 minute checkpoint. And that's not something that she's doing specifically just for me, you know, but she has other narrators that she works with as well. But generally, you will get like maybe a few weeks in order to put in that 15 minute checkpoint. And the author is the one that will approve or um, will choose how long you have to put that checkpoint in. Now on to that second deadline. So the second deadline is your full audio book. That is your finished product. So that means you record it, you edit it, all of that. That time frame for that is typically a good couple months down the line, two to three months down the line. So you have quite a bit of time to be able to do the, uh, the audio books and to actually submit those recordings. So, you know, just keep that in mind. So even if you do have other obligations, audiobook narration is something that you can just do, even if you want to just do it on the weekends or do it in the evenings. Like I said, um, I know like when I did my first audio book, like I'm a single mom. So um, when I did my first one, I actually did, um, like I would like record 
sometimes at like two in the morning. <laughs> so I would do it at different times. And one, you know, word of advice is you might also want to record when other people are asleep, just because there's so much commotion, especially if you live in a city like I do. I'm a Philly girl. There's always sirens. And, you know, I actually live like closer to the burbs now, but I'm still in Philly. So I'm still getting the sirens and, you know, it's quieter over here, but trust me when I tell you, even, you know, my neighbors, dogs, like I mentioned, those things. Um, and also that will put more time on your recordings, you know, that you have to like factor in when it comes to it, because you have to record around other people or, you know, you might have a noise in the background that you have to delete this section and re-record it, you know, so it's that kind of thing. But yeah, long story short, Miguel, hope that answered your question. Um, yeah, um, you can start with the shorter books, but don't be discouraged because you do get a quite long time frame to put in those other, um, the 15 minute checkpoint and that final product. Okay. Um, so let me see. Oh, oh, no problem, CJ. Um, let me see. Let's see. I see Latoya has a question. So, so I've been watching videos on how to set up my audacity to meet ACX standards. It's very difficult. I feel like my brain just can't comprehend it. Yes. And um, that's okay. Hold on. Let me see before I even go into that. She says, I was recording my audition for a book last night and I spent such a long time to get a somewhat decent read. Then it was time to edit and it took so long. Yes. And I'm not sure if you were here, um, Latoya, when I said that. Yes, that is like, like in my course, that is the biggest pain point. That's the biggest pain point for narrators in general is that recording like should I say the editing process of like making sure to meet those sound requirements but um but that was my point like when I brought up this slide so as you can see um I said my audiobooks are on audible amazon and itunes and the reason why the sound requirements are so strict is because it has to basically be okay to be listened to on various platforms so that's they're not you know, I don't think they're just being jerks about it but <laughs> you know so I don't think they're you know I don't think that's the case I think it's you know just they want to make sure that there's like consistent sound and, you know, those types of things. So they definitely have to be strict when it comes to the sound because you don't want to be listening on, you know, if you happen to like to listen on iTunes, you don't want the sound to sound crazy, you know, versus if you got audio books from Audible, you know. So, you know, it it should balance out and be pretty consistent amongst the different books. Um, so let me... Um, let me go to another point that I have for you guys and let me see. So, oh, and you know, matter of fact, let me just cover this real quick because I know some people are not familiar. They're like, just yeah, Latoya. Yes, it is overwhelming. Trust me when I tell you. So this is basically my story, right? So I just put this up here so y'all can see it because I know there's a lot of um, people that are not subscribed. And by the way, make sure y'all hit the thumbs up button, please, 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 because the algorithm hates on your girl, okay? And I have a lot of information that can make you quite a bit of money. And, you know, I have like, what, 32K at this point. And most of the time people are like DMing me like, I'm not getting your videos. I haven't seen you in a minute. And I'm like, listen, like I'm putting out the videos, but, you know... Until recently, I had got sick um, last month, but typically I had I put out at least two videos a week and people aren't seeing it because like the algorithm is hating on your girl. So do me a favor and hit the thumbs up and also subscribe. Um, um, good night. Uh, what is this? Star gal. All right. So, um, yeah, so this is my story. So basically, like I said, I am a single mom. In 2020, I auditioned for my first audio book. Long story short, ended up getting five contracts from that first um, from that first audition. And the crazy part is like, you know, I was home because of the pandemic and I'm like, I need to figure out a way to make some money because before that I was actually doing Uber. And the reason why I chose to do Uber was because it allowed me flexibility with my schedule. So that's always the most important thing to me. Like I love money, but at the same time, I am a single mom. And when I tell you I'm a single mom, it's like, I'm a single mom. Nobody else is helping me. Like, it's just me and my daughter, you know? So I can't just send her to somebody's house and say, oh, you know, I need some time. So what I, you know, the thing for me is when it comes to having to pick my daughter up from school, drop her off, extracurricular activities, I have to be available, you know? So for me, it's always more important that a schedule is flexible versus 
is this job, you know, is this an uh, actual career? You know, that's how I ended up falling into the whole side hustle thing, you know? So um, in case y'all not familiar, I know a lot of people don't know, but um, it's not something I really talk much about. Um, before that, I was a police sergeant in Philadelphia and I was, I worked in Philly for seven years. And the thing was like, I left when I had my daughter. And when I tell you, like, it was a struggle after that, but the whole reason why I had to leave was because that schedule just was not conducive for a single mom. Like, luckily I was a supervisor when I had my daughter, but I ended up having a stand roll call with my child. And if anybody's been in the military or police work, then y'all know like roll call is not the place to have a baby. Okay. So yeah, I had to have my daughter in roll call. And I was like, that was my breaking point. So I left the police department in um, technically 2011 tw hashtag, you know, or slash 2012. Um, it was like the beginning of 2012. And yeah, so from there, I'm like, I need something more flexible. So I had a nine to five, hated that job, did work it for quite a while. And I started Uber while I was working that job. And then I, you know, then the pandemic happened, basically had to start over and then fell into audiobook narration. So um, yes, yeah, so let me go to this thing. Let me hold on. So like I said, guys, like I know a lot of people have joined later on. So I know you may not know, but I have a free masterclass as well um, where I teach this stuff. So I'm just pulling up, like trying to skip through some points. So if you, you know, if you want more in-depth information, like, yeah, that's, that's good to see. But also um, below this video, it's a really good time, especially for those of you that like are serious about audiobook narration. I have my audiobook narration course. It's on sale. It's 35% off. Today is the last day. It's a Veterans Day sale. So um, yeah, and it comes with the one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. So you will meet directly with me and we'll, we'll get your stuff straight, okay? So that you can start make, making this money. All right, so yeah. Um, let me see. Oh, okay. So I was just about to pull up perfect timing, Miguel. Um, so last question when recording, do you read or record a full chapter or do you, or what do you recommend? What's your preferred method? Um, so I think what you're asking is if I do it all in one sitting, um, if that's the case, sometimes I mean, I try to do it. I, I always try to start and stop at the beginning of chapters, but, um, I have to, you know, I have to go pick up my daughter. I have to record videos. I have to do all these other things. So um, sometimes like I'll, I'll have to give myself a set time. Like, okay, I have to stop recording at this time. So while I try to record chapters at a time is not guaranteed, but, you know, just for like purposes of being able to come back and continue on exactly where I left off and making sure that sound is consistent because sometimes, you know, you might sound a slightly different. Maybe some people might not catch it, but you might sound different at a certain time of day. You might be exhausted, you know, that kind of thing. So I try to make it consistent um, when I'm recording to try to, to have all like a whole chapter in a sitting. Okay. So yeah. Um, yeah. So I hope that answered your question. I, I think that's what you were asking there. Um, but let me cover auditions for you guys. So I'm going to expand this real quick. So there are some platforms where you can find auditions and a lot of people, you know, of course, ACX is the go-to. That's the one that I use, but, um, and again, they're owned by Amazon, but also there are some alternatives. And as a matter of fact, my number one video on this channel has been how um has been alternatives five alternatives to acx so a lot of people do like the content about you know other places where they can record audiobooks so keep those in mind as well you might want to screenshot this or um if you're on mobile um but fiverr upwork and voices.com or some great alternatives to acx but also with that um just be aware like voices.com they will ask for money like they have a membership um, I believe you could still do some free stuff on there. Also, Fiverr is a really, really, really good one. 
Um, there are some people that have started on Fiverr and have actually expanded to doing bigger and better things. Also, Upwork. Upwork is another platform. I like to think of Upwork as like a version of Fiverr. So you can go on there and you can post you know, that you're an audiobook narrator. Same thing with Fiverr. Basically, that's what you're doing on both, right? Um, but those are general freelance websites, Fiverr and Upwork. And then you can, um, you know, that you can find other jobs on there as well. So I've actually talked about Fiverr and Upwork a lot on this channel for other endeavors as well. So definitely don't um, overlook those. But ACX is the go-to place because with ACX, it's like such an easy experience. I feel like they mastered it. Like ACX basically mastered how to like link up the narrators and the, the authors without costing either any money. So um, just, you know, let me, let me um, change this so you guys can see me. So uh, hold on, let me do this. Okay. No, I don't want it that big. All right, there we go. So, um, the thing is when it comes to ACX, one reason I'm going to tell y'all, this is the, the flat out, the real, real version, <laughs> the real truth about why a lot of people use ACX, or should I say why a lot of authors use ACX? It's because they can go on there and find people to do the work for no money. OK, so um, there are a few different types of contracts, but the main type of contract is a royalty share contract. And I'm going to cover the contracts in a minute. But um, when it comes to the royalty share contract, the reason why that is the most prevalent type of contract is because that doesn't cost the author a thing. OK, so what they can do is they go on there and basically that is you splitting the royalties of the book sales with the author. So you each get 20 percent of the sale of the book. Okay. So they're not putting any money out unless they, they choose like one of the other types of contracts, but it's really rare, um, to choose a different type of contract. So that's why ACX is like cream of the crop, you know, when it comes to authors going on there to find people, because they don't have to put out any money. You can literally write a book and say, you know what? Oh, I want somebody to read this and we'll just split the profits, you know? So, I mean, smart. <laughs> um, but also, when it comes to auditioning, one thing that you want to keep in mind, and I'm going to do um, a video specifically about this. So stay tuned for that. Um, but you want to find the right book for you. Okay. So everybody has, you know, as we covered earlier, like different accents or um, like gender, like the sound of your genders. The thing is, and the, let me make this very clear, whatever filters that you you go for whatever type of book you don't have to be that person okay so there are some women with really deep voices that can pass for a male voice so i mean you can audition for a male voice so or for example there may be somebody that is american that does a great british accent you can still audition for that book. You don't have to be British in order to do it. You see what I'm saying? So um, let me see. Um, let me see. Hold on. I see some questions coming in. So let me, uh, hold on. I don't want to skip anybody. Um, do you start? Okay. Let me see. Uh, Latoya, do you start a new track for each chapter? Yes. Yes. So um, what she's referring to is the platform, and I'll, I'll talk about that, but the platform that most narrators use, I, I'm, I think I can safely say most narrators on ACX will use Audacity. And Audacity is a free recording platform. So it's Audacity Team. Um, let me go to their website just to make sure I have the right um, Audacity. Yeah, audacityteam.org. I will drop that link in the chat for you guys. Um, but yeah, audacityteam.org is where you would find that software. And the reason why a lot of people will use that is because, um, you know, it's free. And then also there's like plugins that you can use, just like you have apps on your phone. There's a plugin that you can put into Audacity and it can help you 
get an idea of whether your sound will be accepted on ACX. But um, so what she's referring to is starting a new track, which means like, you know, I don't know if you've you guys have seen like recording tracks, even when it comes to like music, right? When they're recording something, it's on like a track with the waves and stuff, right? So um, a new track would be you, you know, saving that, you can close it out or whatever, and then just start all new for chapter two and then do the same thing for chapter three. So yes, um, Latoya, I do. I start a new chapter for each, for each, um, Chapter. I mean, I start a new track for each chapter. And the reason why you definitely it's necessary to do that is because when you're uploading it to ACX, you have to like, the, it will be in there. It'll say like chapter one, chapter two. So it'll show you which clips to upload, right? So if chapter one and two are on the same track, that's going to be one file. So you want to have all your files separately. So if you have 25 chapters and if they if they happen to want you to record an intro or whatever it is, um, however many chapters there are, you should have at least that many clips, um, MP3. So you upload as an MP3, you'll save your audio as an MP3 and then upload it to um, ACX. So um, let me see, Stargirl, I see... Um, uh, do you need any specific equipment to do this? You don't need any specific, like specific brands, but it's really, really important to have a good microphone because I'm going to be real with y'all. This is like something where it's like, you know, I butt heads with people a lot on this one because there's always people that want to like come back at it and say like, oh, well, you don't need a good microphone. You could just know, like literally and if you can invest in a microphone, invest in a microphone, but the very least you want to have a microphone that is specifically for like recording. So, I mean, you can even use like podcast microphones. And um, like I said, down below this video, I have um, on YouTube guys, cause I, I forgot face uh, Facebook is here too, but, um, but below my video on YouTube, if you expand the description box, I have my Amazon storefront on there. And I have a dedicated idea list for audiobook narration equipment. So in there, I will, I, I have bundles that I suggest that are quite affordable. Like you can get a whole bundle that will include a microphone um, and some other stuff. I'll cover that as well, but um, you can get a bundle that has all of that in there and you can get that for like 50 bucks. Okay. So keep in mind, like when it comes to like getting into new endeavors and this is not just for audiobook narration but if you want to do as best you can a lot of times you have to believe in yourself enough to invest in yourself and investing in yourself doesn't mean that you have to put out hundreds of dollars investing in yourself means you you know you might have to go get a microphone go go get a you know this 50 50 dollar bundle it'll set you up you know what i mean so you want to give yourself the best start possible and the reason why I drill that home is because think about this. If you are auditioning for an audiobook and you have a microphone that, you know, you decide, okay, you know what, I'm going to record this on my phone. You got the room echo and all kinds of stuff going on, right? Then here I come. I have my setup. I have the stuff to cut down on my echo. I have a dedicated microphone. And me and you, we have equal talent. And I have this good equipment and you have your cell phone. Guess who's going to get that audition? So, I mean, who's going to get that contract? You know what I mean? So give yourself the best chance at the best start and just go for it and get, you know, the equipment. Um, again, on my Amazon storefront is where you can find um, my suggested equipment. Um, may I ask how much you charged PFH when you started or what's a good starting point? Okay. So I, I like how you said, if it's not too personal, I appreciate that. Cause a lot of times people will like literally try to like get into my bank account, <laughs> but that, that question was fine. I, I appreciate the way that, um, that you asked that. Um, so, um, I didn't charge PFH. So <laughs> I know people are like, and I, I'm just thinking of, and I'm not laughing at your question. I'm just laughing at people are like, what the heck is a PFH? So <laughs> I'm going to, I was actually going to cover that a little later, but let's talk about it. So PFH is per finished hour. So what that means is 
that is the finished amount of the recording. So for example, you can take 20 hours to record this audiobook, but that PFH, that per finished hour is, um, or should I say the finished hours are going to be like, that book might only be two hours long, but you took 20 to record it and edit it and do all that stuff, right? So that per finished hour is a rate that is charged. So depending on the type of contract, then you might get paid per finished hour. You can get, and I'll, I'll cover them more in depth. I'm, I know it's like feeling around in the dark a little bit. So I'm trying to like make it understandable, but I'm going to actually show you better on the slides. Um, but when it there's three types of contracts and one is the royalty share, which is what I have. So to answer your question, Latoya, no, I have, um, since I have the royalty share contract, there's no per finish hour for me. So it's just literally, I get paid based off of the sales of my books. So um, I didn't get money from the author. So when it comes to PFH, um, so y'all know, um, the per finished hour, if you're charging two, $200 per finished hour, that means if your book is two hours long, that means you're getting paid $400, if that makes sense. Um, so when it comes down to it, even if you put 20 hours in, you're still going to get that same per finished hour rate versus if you have a royalty contract and they do have combination contracts where you get both and we'll cover that. But the royalty share contract, you don't get paid per finished hour. However long it takes you, it's all going to depend on your sales. So that was um, those are the contracts that I have a royalty share contracts. And I'm actually going to give you all some tips to be able, since that's the most prevalent type of contract, I'll give you, you know, a little information about how to make more money on those books. Okay. Um, so let me see. Latoya says, I know people say don't use USB microphones, but what are your thoughts on it as a, a beginner mic? Um, USB. Well, mine plugs in as a USB. So I get great sound. Like I get, I get a lot of positive feedback about how it sounds. So um, I, I don't have an issue with it. Um, I don't. Mm. I mean, that doesn't really matter. Like it, what really matters is like that you have a condenser microphone um, that is meant for recording. So you'll get better sound from that. So I feel like that's going like a little, little deep. Um, but yeah, USB mics are fine. Um, um, no problem, Stargal. All right. And no problem, Latoya. Um, so Stargal says, um, yeah, uh, she says, is the royalty contract better? So the royalty contract um, is not necessarily better, but that's most likely what you're going to run into when you are auditioning for audiobooks. You're you're going to scroll through the you know the books and everything that are available, and most of them are going to be royalty contracts. And again, this is because the authors don't have to put any money out when they are getting people for those royalty contracts. So. Um, yeah, the royalty contract is better if, like, let's take that out of the equation of, like, what's available more. Um, the best type of contract would be the royalty um, royalty plus contract. So um, that is the combination contract. So I'll get deeper into that in a minute. But no, the royalty contract is not the best type of contract, if you ask me. Um, let me see. Let me see. Uh let me see what's uh Latoya's let's what is he say less because I have the the five find I think is great, but I got I got the recording box in your Amazon storefront. It's pretty decent. Yeah, girl, you're a rider. I appreciate you getting it. But yes, that's and that's that's the thing. So what she's talking about, um, I'll actually I'll cover that in a minute. So give me a minute, y'all. Um, I just want to make sure I finished out this slide. So um, yeah, so finding the right type of book for you is like just making sure that you find that type of book where you are comfortable reading that type of book. So for example, if you're going to audition for a mystery novel, right? If you don't like mystery books, this is not the right type of book for you. This is not going to work out for you. This is not going to, this is not going to end well. <laughs> okay. So, um, always like to find the right book for you, 
you know, use the filters that are available on ACX. And let me see if I can pull up the filters. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, let me, let me go into that so y'all can see. Um, no problem, Soggy Al. Um, so this is what I mean um, about the ACX website. So this is what it looks like. I'll expand it so you can see it. Let me remove my banner uh, real quick. Um, here we go. Okay. So this is the ACX website. And this is what it would look like if you go on that website right now. You're, this, is what is, this is what you're going to see, right? So um, right there, um, in order to audition, you are going to want to go to, there's like, I don't know if you can, if you notice it, hopefully you notice it under that black bar that's across the middle of the screen below that, that first little icon with the, are you an actor or a producer? That's what you would click. That's a clickable link. So once you click that, it's going to take you over to Hold on, let me make sure I have this. Okay, to this page. So this page says find titles open for auditions, right? Below that, you see that big orange button? It says find a book for your voice. That's where you find the audiobooks. So you don't even have to sign up for the ACX website. And again, this is acx.com that we're looking at right now. So you don't even have to create an an ACX account. And if you have an Amazon account, it's seamless to have an ACX account. And that's because ACX is owned by Amazon. Because when you do your audio books, again, you can see it right there. Audible is the very first one, Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. That's where your recordings, your books would end up. Amazon owns Audible as well. So what is that? That's the number one audio book platform. So when you find a book for your voice is when you click that button, it will take you over to titles accepting auditions. So from here, this is where you would be able to find and filter through any of the books that you're interested in. So even before you sign up for an account, you can get an idea of, is this going to work out for me? Like, you know, is this, you know, are there any books on here, which mind you, they typically have at least 2000 books on there. Um, so chances are you will find a book that you might find interesting. So um, you can filter through there. You can search by keywords or this is really, really, really important. All right. So I hope y'all taking notes on this one. Um, the thing that you want to check out, hold on, let me see if, okay, well, I, I thought I had this slide in here, but um, right here on the left hand side where it says titles, ex um, under titles, accepting auditions, see, see that menu on the left hand side, that full long, the black print, right? So profile filter, you have genre, gender compensation. Um, and then it goes on, you know, fiction, voice age, you can filter by all of those, use those filters. Okay. So, um, so make sure you use those because um, if you have like something unique about yourself, like if you know, okay, I'm not going to, to be able to land an audition for a male narrated book because I have a female's voice. I'm going to weed out all those male voice, you know, all those male books. And just because first of all, like we're looking at over 2000 books, just, you know, right here. So you want to be able to filter down so that it's not overwhelming but you want to filter down and see like, okay, what kind of book would I like to read? Okay. So then from there, like, you know, if you have a particular type of genre that you like, say, if you like poetry books, you can filter by that. All that stuff is in there. Say if, and I always like to point out, I have an urban accent. That's what I do. I filter by accent and I click urban. So um, let me change this let me get this out all right so that's that's something that you want to keep in mind is that um you want to make sure you use those filters oh and here it is right here i'm like i knew it was in here which is just mixed up all right so 
Um, this is that. See where the arrow is pointing? That is. Those are those filters that I just talked about. So that's just a you know a way to see it bigger. All right. So yeah. So voice age. So some people sound older than others, or some people sound especially. Let me point this out. Um. Uh, some people actually sound younger. Um, and that's something that I've experienced a few times where people will ask me suggestions about a book that they should be auditioning for. Or um, there was one female, she was really, really good. And she asked me like, well, why am I not getting auditions? And I heard her voice and I'm like, girl, audition for children's books. <laughs> so she had like a really youthful voice. She literally could have done voiceovers for like cartoons and stuff. Like she really had, and, and not knocking her voice at all. I, I loved her voice. I'm like, this sounds perfect for a children's book. Start auditioning for those kids books, you know? So just make sure you use those filters. Um, so, so that you can get a better chance of landing those auditions. Um, let me see. Um, no problem, Star Gal. Uh, let me see. And let me see. Da, da, da. Okay. Miguel says, I've been told I have a gentle giant type of voice. Would you recommend I audition for children's books if I have a really deep voice? Um, well, it would depend. So, I mean, you think about it, like there are different topics of books. So for me to sit here and say like, oh no, like there's not you know, children's books that you would be good for, that would be crazy to say because there are so many different storylines that can, you know, that can occur. So like, for example, there could be a book about, you know, just throwing this out there. I don't even know if it exists, but there could be a book where like a children's book where the giant is giving his side of the story. You know what I mean? So you, you never know what you might land based off of your voice. So if that's why I would, if I were you, I would start with filtering for male voices and then go from there. Like, you know, just go through, um, you can even filter, just scroll through and see, are there any children's books um, that, that are available that I might audition for? So you can go from there. Um, but let's see. Um, let me make sure. Let me get jump through. All right. So this is, what we were just talking about more in depth. So this is the contracts on ACX. So there are three types of contracts. There's pay for production, royalty share, and royalty share plus. So the first one, pay for production, you have a, um, a flat rate per finished hour, which means you're getting one flat rate. That's all you're going to get. You're not getting anything else. So if your flat rate is $150, if you accept this contract and it takes you 40 hours to record this book, or, or, or I mean, that, yeah, if it takes you 40 hours to record the book, but the book in total length, like after editing it down is two hours, you're going to get $300 because you got $150 per finished hour. Okay. So you got to think about like, is my time, you know, is the time that I'm putting into it, is it going to be worth that, that flat rate? Um, and when you are filtering and auditioning on ACX, you'll be able to see how many finished hours that book is estimated to be. So you can get an idea of what your, your finished rate would be. Um, so then you have the royalty share contract. Again, this is the type of contract um, that I always get. And that's a split where you split it with the author, um, you're splitting 20% for each person, 20% of the sale, but there are ways to make even more money from that. So, um, I'll, I'll tell you that in a, in a, in a minute, but, um, when you get that royalty share contract, that contract is good for seven years. So when I let y'all know, like literally I'm making money in my sleep. Anytime somebody buys that audiobook, buys one of my audiobooks, I'm just making money. So all I have to do is sit back just like with, um, and I like to point out it's almost equivalent to the music industry. So like when artists are, you know, when they put their songs out and stuff that they, they'll get like those royalties from that music, they'll be getting checks in. They, they recorded the song already, but that song is still bringing them, bringing them money in. Right. 
So you get that royalty for seven years. So my very first audiobook that I recorded in 2020, I'm going to be getting paid off of that until 2027. And also the royalty share plus is the next type of contract, which is um, a combination of both pay for production and royalty share. So um, you will get a flat rate per finished hour and you will be able to split the royalties. So that's how um, that's how the contracts work out. Uh, let me see if there was anything else. So, all right. Yeah, let's cover this. All right. So um, <laughs> this is like the question that I get all the time. It's like, what does it mean to produce? So to produce, I literally put the definition in here from the dictionary. Okay. So it says it's the process of developing, creating, and refining a recording for, for public presentation. So what that means is you are able to like record the stuff and then you're editing it that that's you refining the recording and it's for public presentation that's when people are listening to it when they're jogging or you know all of that stuff right so that's the process of getting that book recorded and making it the finished product after editing that's what production is so editing balancing the sound and you got to meet those sound requirements on acx which are really really strict um and also just so y'all know, and people get shocked at this in case you don't know, the narrator, nine times out of 10 on ACX, it, or I, I've never heard of a case where they're not, honestly, but the narrator is responsible for production. So a lot of people think like, oh, okay, I could go into this and I just record these books. Um, No, you need to make sure that you're the one that is able to get it edited as well. I mean, you can go pay somebody to edit it for you, but now that's cutting into your profits. And especially if you have a royalty share contract, you haven't gotten any money yet. You're now you're negative. And who's to say that book is going to sell. So yeah, you're going to be the one editing it. And it's really, really important that you figure out how to get that editing done and meet those sound requirements. And I'm going to tell y'all when I first um, did my narration, you know, when I first started my journey, that what that literally I'm like, what did I get myself into? I have this contract and now I have to edit this book. Cause I, I just thought like, Oh, okay. I'm just going to record this and then I'm going to upload it. It's going to be all good. Nope. ACX sent me an email. Like mm -mm, this, this does not meet our sound requirements. Like fix it. Basically. <laughs> they basically were like, fix it chick. So, <laughs> so what I had to do, I had to figure it out. And when I tell y'all, like it took me weeks to try to figure out like every little thing, like when it comes to like, um, there's something called floor noise and RMS and all of that stuff that you have to meet that make sure it meets those sound requirements. And I'm gonna tell y'all, it takes a lot of research. Um, and I'm a, I'm a perfectionist when it comes down to it. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, it did meet those sound requirements and that I wouldn't have any other issues with it. But it, even when looking back, it's like when you when you compare my first book to my last book, world of difference. So even while you're going through this process, even though you can get it to accept the, the sound requirements, I mean, accept your sound and everything, we always can improve. <laughs> OK, so um, so even if it meets the sound requirements and may not even be the best when it comes to the sound, but as long as it meets those sound requirements, you're in but you do definitely want to try to learn what you're doing because what's going to happen is if somebody gets that book and it sounds bad, like even if ACX was like, okay, you're good to go. If people are listening to it and they're like, mm, this doesn't sound good. That's going to affect your reviews. That's going to affect um, your sales. And, you know, and if you have a royalty share contract, that's going to affect your money and potentially your reputation. So, you know, that's why it's really, really important to, to actually try to learn how to edit and record the sound and everything. And so y'all know, like the ACX website is really, really good for that. Like you can find everything you need to know pretty much on the ACX website, but, and that's why it took me so many like weeks to like get everything figured out. Cause I'm going one little step at a time trying to figure everything out. And it's a lot of information. It's a lot of information. And then it's just a lot. 
So, um, so definitely like, you know, use your resources, make sure you do read through like their policy of, you know, your, the requirements and stuff when it comes to recording, make sure you read through that stuff. A lot of people will try to take shortcuts, but it's really important that you understand it. Um, and for, for those people that are like, you know what, no, I need somebody to like really help me with this. Um, below this video, cause I know people are in and out below this video. I have my audiobook narration course. It's called the blue audiobook blueprint where I will sit with you one-on-one -on -one and we, and I will coach you and we will get your sound work that we'll make sure you, you understand what you need to do to get those auditions in. We'll work on your, um, your recording, all of that stuff. I'll give you firsthand information. We will talk directly me and you. Okay. Um, so in addition to that, there's like, I think 20 video modules in there as well as my five steps to, um, newbie to narrator, ebook is in there and that's exclusive to my students and plus there's some other exclusives to my students in that course and something that oh I can't wait it's like really really it's it's, it's in the works that my students are going to really really benefit from um so yeah it's exclusive so just if you're interested in that course then it's below this video and until the end of tonight is on sale for 35 percent off so get in where you fit in. And just so y'all know, I'm going to end up closing, um, closing registration for it because I can't have a thousand students in a course where I got to do one-on-ones. It's just not going to help my students. So, you know, try to get in before I close out uh, registration for that course. But, um, but let me go to another. Oh yeah. Let me pull this. Here's some tips. All right. So this is what I want. This is the other thing I did want to make sure I cover um before we finish this out um so these are my production tips so this is like these are like the main basics of what you're going to need when it comes to recording these um audiobooks so the very first thing is a condenser microphone with a pop filter so the condenser microphone again um i use the shore mv51 microphone this is what you're hearing me on now and um i do like when i do my youtube videos um, I do voiceovers, not voiceovers, but I do, um, like tutorials and stuff. So I use this and people just love the clarity of the sound on this. So, um, so yeah, this is my, my microphone. Um, also, all right, good night y'all. Um, but yeah, so also the pop filter is what goes in front of the microphone. I don't have it on my microphone right now, but I do have this right here. So all of this stuff, um, let me actually make this bigger. Um, ooh, wrong one. Um, but yes, this is, and I just I just threw this together because I, I was coming on live. But um, this is the pop filter. So this is the screen. It's a screen that goes in front of your microphone. So that way, when you're like doing like the P sounds and stuff, it's not blowing wind all in your microphone because that's a bad experience for your listener. Um, so you don't want that. So make sure you get a pop filter. Pop filters, you can get them for under 20 bucks. Okay. Um, and again, on my Amazon store, I have, um, I suggest, um, there's at least one bundle that I have in there and they have a pop filter in a microphone already in that bundle for like 50 bucks or less. Okay. Um, also while I'm talking about it, all this, all of this is on my Amazon storefront. This is, and I have like the foam sticking out here, but this is, um, the, this foam box, it helps cut down on the echo. So when I'm recording, my microphone goes in here and I'm literally recording into the box like this. So that way I'm not having all the room echo, you know, surrounding my microphone. Okay. So it gives better sound quality. And I actually have this on a stand. Sometimes they're listed. There's a bunch of different stands on Amazon. I, um, this one is in my storefront as well. Um, but yeah, sometimes they call them like DJ stands or laptop stands um, so this one, like it's adjustable, it's adjustable height. It actually goes up higher than this, um, and goes lower. And, um, so I can adjust it to like whatever my chair height is, and I can speak directly into the microphone and record from there. So, um, oh, how far in do I put my mic? Um, let me bring your question up. So I will normally, I have it like around here, like close to the middle, but a little, a lot of times a little closer to the front of the middle, but, um, but yeah, like toward the front, but not too far out, you know what I mean? Cause then it would make it purposeless. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I have, 
I'll put it typically like right around here. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's where I put my microphone and yep. So that's basically my setup. So some people will think they have to go all out and go padding a room and doing all that craziness. You don't have to do all that. Like literally you could just buy a few pieces of equipment and you, you will have really, really great sound from there. Okay. Um, but also let me bring this back up. Um, so come on. There we go. All right. So, um, the other thing that you want are headphones. And I explained earlier, um, that you can hear like lower noises and stuff if you have your headphones on. So if there's a dog barking in the background or something, your neighbor's dog or a siren or something that you didn't notice while you were recording because you were talking into the microphone and not listening to what was surrounding you. When you play it back, you will hear those other sounds and you can, you know, basically catch them before you try to upload them to ACX. Okay. Um, so then you have the editing, uh, the editing and recording software, which is Audacity. That's what I use. And also, if you have a Mac, you can also use GarageBand. Um, so, I mean, those are like free options for you. So those, those are my basic production tips. In my course, I go way deeper than that, and I actually show like, like tips and stuff to like really use all of these, as well as um, especially when it comes to the editing platform. So, um, yep, that's ex exclusively in there and oh let me um this is just so y'all know this is my amazon store so that is let me drop a link for it as a matter of fact um but yeah that's my amazon store and in there you have the idea list so that's why i have the image there so you can see exactly where to find it because i know some people are like wait i don't know anything about an idea list um so and if you if you do happen to go over there just please make sure you follow me um uh, because i do live streams over there as well. So um, I have um, a live stream that I, I've been wanting to do live streams every Friday, but you know, I, like I said, I had got sick. So I'm trying to starting over from square one here and I got work to catch up on, but I'm going to start doing weekly live streams. I really do like the Amazon um, live streams. Like people don't realize that people go live on Amazon, like Candy Burris has a, her own live streams and stuff. So like we all have, you know, like all of us, um, Amazon folks, you know, influencers, we can go live on there. So I, I actually have done a live stream. As a matter of fact, on there, I actually have like an older live stream that I did where I walked through my equipment on there as well. Um, but let me make sure, um, it, let me know if you guys have any questions because we are getting toward the end. Um, let me see if there is, oh, okay. Yeah. So um, you definitely want to promote your book. So that's another thing that people overlook when it comes to narrating is you want to make sure you promote your book. So don't just record it, upload it, and then be like, oh, okay, they gave me, because they'll send you an email and they'll say, okay, your book is live now. So people can buy it. Don't think that your job is done. If you have a royalty contract, like either the, um, the royalty share plus where you're getting a royalty and the flat rate, or if you're just, if you have like a straight royalty contract, you're going to rely on, you're going to need people buying that book in order to make you some more money. So you have to promote that book. So I'm not saying go out and buy ads. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but you definitely want to promote your book um, on any platforms that you have. If you're on social media, make sure you promote your books there, as well as if you have, um, I'm a blogger. I have um, my website is NikkiConnected.com. So on there, like I talk about audiobook narration as well as like, and that's more of a, you know, I talk about side hustles and stuff, but I have also like more family oriented stuff or, you know, things that can help you in your daily life, such as like saving money and stuff. I have all of that over there on that website, but, um, but over there, I, I do like, I have a, a blog post about audiobook narration and I you know, literally can promote my book through that. So like, just I'll use me as an example. So different ways that I promote my book is when I talk about it on my, on my YouTube channel, especially boom, that always leads to more sales. Then you have uh, my blog doing blog posts. Then I have my social medias. Um, so I have my Instagram, my Facebook, I put out my books on there. 
Um, oh, and I don't, I don't advertise on Pinterest really. Well, technically I do because I actually do on Pinterest. I have, um, pins where I'll, you know, talk about audiobook narration. And then when people go over and read that blog post, boom, I'm plugging my book in that blog post. So those are some ways that I do uh, promote my books. So just to give you, um, that's, that's exactly, you know, those, those are my methods. So, um, let me see, hold on one second. All right. So Latoya says, what do you do to keep mouth noise at a minimum outside of using the filter? Um, so the only other thing that I do is I try not to eat, <laughs> um, or like basically ingest anything while I'm recording. Um, because a lot of times like you might have like food in your mouth and now you're getting like, you know, you might be, you know, trying to dig stuff out or whatever, you know what I mean? So, um, I try not to eat around that time. Um, also, I mean, it's, it's imperative to have water when you are recording, but when I do, um, drink water, I, I drink like little sips. Like I don't like get a mouthful of water because now you're going to have like a slushy mouth, like, and you can literally hear it in your recording. So those are, um, some things that, that I do. Um, let me see. Okay. So, um, sorry if I'm, I'm, we'll, I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, but, um, how do you advertise yourself when it comes to accent, when different people hear differently things from you? Like people hear a general American accent from me when others hear a foreign accent. Um, so the thing is you have to, first of all, get suggestions from people that you know okay like that's you know one way of doing it um but also when you are on acx let me point this out um you can actually post um what do you call it uh samples on your profile on acx so you can put samples of um like your different recordings right so at that point you are basically advertising what you sound like. So a narrator can find you through your sample. Like they can listen to your samples. Like they can scroll through ACX and listen to samples, right? Um, if you don't have, you don't have to have a sample on your website. I mean, on your, on your ACX page, let me just make that very clear. To this day, I still don't have a sample. I auditioned, but if you want authors to be able to come to you, then put samples up there and you can put more than one sample. I think they do up to four or something like that, somewhere around there. Um, so you're basically advertising yourself when you put samples on your profile, but also, um, I mean, all you can do at, at that point, um, otherwise, you know, you got the samples, you got friends and family. And then also, um, one thing I do in my course is, you know, like I said, I do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, so in there, that's another thing that a lot of people will ask me is like, well, what types of books should I record? So, you know, I'll give them my feedback as to what what types of books or what type of accent I'm hearing. And, you know, basically to put them on the right path of the types of book to record. Um, so my course is an option as well as, um, again, um, like out of those three, if you run out of those, then definitely just go for it. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. Like, you know, you may, you may hear one thing. Other people may hear something else. If you feel as though that you potentially have that accent, then just go for it. You know what I mean? If you don't get the audition, it, it is what it is. You have that experience of how to audition at that point. You know what I mean? So, um, people get caught up on like whether or not they should audition for certain things. Sometimes you just have to like cash that, cast that fishing line out there and then see what kind of fish you get. Okay. So, um, like I said, you know, I didn't expect to get a contract. I just literally just read the sample that was on there. So um, just so y'all know, like when you do find a book that you want to audition for right there on that ACX website, you will have the chance to be able to like pull up the script and be able to record and upload your audition right there on the spot. So that was what I did. That's how I got my, um, my first contract. So um, let me see. Uh, Good question. So Latoya says, as a woman, when a male character comes up, do you change your voice to reflect masculinity? Absolutely. Um, and you may feel silly doing it, you know, and it, you know, 
it is what it is. Like people know that it's being narrated by a woman, you know, or by a female's voice. So, um, you know, you, you just have to like, just read that story the way that you read it. And that's the other thing is some people would think that you're just reading a book and like you're getting paid to read, but you're doing more than reading. You are doing voice acting. So when you're acting, you are putting yourself in those characters and actually, you know, acting out what you, you know, basically to help the the listener understand, okay, this is a male voice or, you know, this is a female voice. Oh my gosh. Okay. So they're excited. You know, they're upset. Those types of things, you have to act all of that out. So that would include like different inflections in your voice, changing your pacing um, and um, what else? Inflections, pacing, and like changing your tone of voice, things like that. So um, yeah, that's something I covered like in depth in my course as well uh, when it comes to um, recording those audiobooks. But um, oh, no problem. Um, and so let me make sure. Um, I think there was maybe one more point. Okay. Yep. So, so people were asked like how ACX pays. So you can get direct deposit or paper check. And I'm talking in the realms of royalty share contracts, like when ACX is paying you. I'm not talking about when the author pays you because when it comes to the flat rate or the royalty share plus that additional flat amount of money that you would get, that has to come from the author. So they have to pay you. Like some people will get paid through PayPal, whatever. That That's between you and the author, how you're going to get paid. Um, ACX is not paying that. That's them. So, um, so yeah, so ACX themselves, when you get royalties, you will get it direct deposit or you can get a paper check. So I always get direct deposit. So I always get a notification every month, ACX, put your money in your account. And not only that, but ACX will also send a monthly statement breaking down the royalties. And I'm actually, matter of fact, I almost forgot that there was a video I wanted to do on this topic because ACX is not perfect. So, um, when it comes to getting paid, um, and, and people have asked me this before too, like, well, how do you know that they're really paying you? I mean, like, I mean, how, how do you know, like, that's, you know, you only sold those amount of books or, you know, how do you know that they're not telling you that you sold 50 books and you really sold a hundred? How do you know? I mean, other, other than... Um, possibly getting an idea from the reviews, the number of reviews that you have, you don't know. You really don't know. And ACX makes mistakes. I'm just going to leave it at that. And I will do a video on that. Um, but yeah, let me make sure I write that down because I did. I wanted to do a video on that for a minute. Um, so forgive me, y'all. Hold on. Let me make a note because I, I do want to make sure I get that video out for y'all. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to have like a few um, audiobook narration videos coming up. I'm thinking maybe next week because this week I'm focusing on, on like the books I get paid for the, the narration. I mean, the uh, low content books or um, Etsy and stuff. Um, but let me see. So the monthly royalty contracts, you, you'll get paid monthly. So that's a monthly pay that you'll get, like I mentioned. And then also here's a tidbit of information. So there are bounty bonuses as well. So the bounty bonuses will pay up to $75 per book sold. So a bounty is a bonus, okay? So if you have a royalty share contract, your bonus would be $50. The $75 one is for like, I think for people with the flat, yeah, for flat rate contracts. And, but basically what this means let me break down the bounty for you. And I have a video on this. I'm going to see if I can find it for y'all. So um, if you, in your spare time, you might want to check that out. Um, but yeah, so there is, with the bounties, they're giving you a bonus for sending new listeners over to the Audible or Amazon website to buy your book. So if your book, Say if somebody signs up, they never signed up for um, for Audible before. They're a brand new, right? They 
if they sign up for that membership and then they buy your audio book, your book is the first book that they that that they get, then you will get that $50 bonus. And that is in addition to the the royalties that you're getting on that. So you're going to get 20% of the sale of that book and you will get a $50 bonus. So trust me when I tell you, I was shocked when the first time I saw um, there was one particular month, I sold one book because I hadn't been pushing my books or anything. And um, so hold on, let me see. Uh, ACX. Um, I'm trying to find the video for y'all. So... But yeah, so what ended up happening was I saw that I had made more than what the book sold for. So I made like, it was somewhere around like $70 off of one sale. Like this was somebody that got a $20 audio book and I ended up getting paid $70 for it. So, so yeah, that was like really, really good. Matter of fact, I'm th no, I'm sorry. I think it was like 60 something. Either way. I got paid for more than what the book um, costs. Uh, so you can make a really, really lucrative living um, from selling the audio books if you do it right. Here we go. I'm like looking for the video. So sorry, y'all. I'm just, I want to make sure I have, um, have this video for y'all where I like, I break that down like in depth for y'all in this video. And um, so here it is. Uh, bonuses so I must make sure y'all have that link and okay so that's in the chat so y'all have that all right so I see there is a question in here Miguel says, um, once you choose a contract, can you switch it later on? I think I'm going to do the royalty share plus flat rate, or should I choose the royalty share? You need to get in where you can fit in. <laughs> so um, it's not as easy as saying, I'm going to choose this type of contract. Unless, I mean, unless you, you're fine with like being out there for a long time, not having any contracts, because... Um, the royalty share contract is the contract that you are going to see the most. You're not going to see very many um, um, like flat rate or royalty share plus contracts. You're just not going to see them. Um, I mean, they're, they're there, they exist, like people get them, but um, yeah, you might want to be really, really careful um, if you do go for those, I almost forgot. Um, Cause there are scammers on ACX as well. Um, so I, I have done videos on it. Just so y'all know, like on my channel, I have an ACX playlist. Um, so, or audiobook narration playlist, where if you scroll through there, like you can see like the different titles of the videos that can potentially help you. So I, I do highly, highly recommend scrolling through there because I give a lot of free information. So like, you know, outside of my, my courses is like for people that are like, you know what, I'm, I'm ready, I'm jumping in. You know, but if you want, just want like information that I have a bunch, I think I have like at least 20 audiobook narration videos on my channel. So um, yeah, definitely check that out. But um, yeah, so I want to make sure I fully answer your question. Yeah. So once you choose a contract though, you can't switch it. You, you sign the contract, you're under contract. So it is what it is. Like you start, you got, you agreed to it. You signed your name on that dot line, basically. It is what it is, right? So you're gonna have to follow through with this this contract, right? So um, so make sure you choose wisely, you know, the type of contract that you will want. So say if you signed up for a flat rate contract and it's like, oh, okay, well, this person's offering me two hundred dollars and you know, per finish hour to do this book, and then you turn around and you realize, like, oh snap, hold on, like, but what if the book doesn't sell? I mean, what if the what if the book sells a whole bunch? Then now I only I'm leaving with, you know, maybe two or four hundred dollars. And now this book is making a bunch of money. So, um, yeah, definitely, you know, I would focus more on not necessarily the contracts, but focusing on the fact that you're auditioning for the right types of books. So using those filters, um, you know, with the gender filters, the accent filters, 
um, those types of things or um, the genres, especially um, make sure you choose a genre that you are willing to, to, um, you know, sit for hours. So make sure y'all comfortable for the, with that book, you know, because literally it's like a job. So you're going to be sitting there recording this book for hours and you got to make sure it's going to be something that you're interested in. Okay. So for me, the urban novels, novels was where, is, where it was at. So that's what I like to read a lot of times. So that's why I, that, I jumped right in. I was like, okay, that's what I'm auditioning for. But, um, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, real quick about, um, the scammers on ACX. Now ACX is never going to come out and tell you, oh yeah, watch out. We got scammers on our website. No, they're not going to tell you that. So, um, like, you have to know that they do exist. Um, they're on there. I've had, you know, in the two years that I've been, uh, or at this point, like two and a half years that I've been doing audiobook narration, I've had people reach out to me and tell me their stories of how they were scammed on ACX. So no platform is perfect. Um, so, you know, it's up to us to protect ourselves when it comes to, um, like avoiding scams. And, um, one thing I do suggest, which is, you know, it's like kind of off topic, but kind of not, um, there's a, a web, I mean, a, um, YouTube channel that I'm, I'm actually, this is the one YouTube channel that I'm a member of. I've never like gotten a membership anywhere, but it's called scammer payback. And, um, the guy that runs that channel, um, he will basically, trap scammers basically like he wastes their time he'll sit there and it, but he does it like so hilarious so but the thing is the whole point of him doing it is not is not exactly the entertainment aspect of it but it is to inform us of the different tactics that scammers use in order to scam us out of our money and um so even when i was a police officer i've dealt with scams directly i've i've it, I've seen it. You know what I mean? I've seen people like hand over their last to scammers. Like I've, I've seen the, the residual effects of that. Um, I've actually, <laughs> there was one woman that got arrested because, because the, we had to investigate the, I had to lock this lady up. <laughs> I feel bad. Like, you know, I'm not laughing at the fact that it happened, but unfortunately um, it, the call came out that she was passing a bad check. So, you know, those are like one tactic that scammers will use. So you never know on ACX, they might try to get you, oh, you know what, let me send you this. I'm going to send you this check and um, cash this check and then just give me only this little bit from it. And what that scam is doing is say, for example, they're giving you, sending you a check for a thousand dollars, right? You go, you try to cash that, you cash, you do supposedly cash that check. You put it in your bank account and then you go, spending this money out of your account, right? You're like, okay, let me let me send them back the $500 that they asked and then I get to keep the rest, right? So I just came up $500, right? So you take that $500 out of your account, immediately you send it to them. About two, three days later, that check is going to clear and it's a fake check. So now that check bounces from your account. Say if you ain't, say if you, your account was at zero just to make it easy math, right? You just put that $1,000 in, you took $500 out that was never really there. It was a, it was phantom money. Basically now your account is negative $500 plus any overdraft fees that you had. So now you're negative all that money. And you just sent this person $500. That's one scam that I, as a police officer have seen. Okay. So that's just like one type of scam that you might run into. I have been told by, um, by subscribers of this channel that have told me that, um, like one girl, she was so excited to get a contract and I felt so bad for her after, cause she had let me know, like, I got a contract. She was so happy. And then, um, after that, like months down the line, she had recorded a lot of her book and ended up getting a notification from ACX. And I'm going to put your question up here, Latoya, because ACX is not going to reimburse you. Nope. So, and that was the thing. So she got notified by ACX. And I'm going to tell you right now, everybody that has been scammed on ACX. And when I tell you these people were scammed, luckily, none of them like put out money. Okay. But time is money. But what I say? <laughs> time is money, right? So 
a lot of times, like the, the main scam that's on ACX is that they will try to get you to narrate a book that they don't own, right? So that, that's the main scam. So again, the authors don't have to pay anything. So this, this scammer, I'm the scammer. I'm coming on here. You know what? Let me, you know what? Let me get somebody to narrate this Harry Potter book. You know, just that's, you know, that'll never happen because Harry Potter already has narration and stuff. But, but let's just use that as an example. I'm gonna get somebody to narrate this Harry Potter book, right? So this book does not belong to me. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to claim as if it that I'm the author. Hey, I'm the author. Um, I'm listing this job up here. Who wants to narrate for Harry Potter? Now I got people coming in. Now I got a bunch of people, you know, trying to clamor at this job. Okay, let me see. Who's the sucker that I'm going to choose? All right, I'm picking this person. Yeah, hey, guess what? You earned a contract for to, to narrate my book. It's the Harry Potter book. So now... This person does the narration for me. And again, this will never happen with Harry Potter, but, um, but it could be any other kind of book. Now this person recorded, they took months to record this book or, you know, it took them a, a month or two to record the book. They send me this audio and, or they, they uploaded that audio to ACX and now ACX is like, Hey, author, guess what? Here's your royalties. Oh, this, this book is selling. People are buying this audio book. And you're collecting money off of a book that's not yours. So that's what the scammers do. But ACX, again, is owned by Amazon. So Amazon, you know, they have different departments and stuff to cut down on fraud. And, you know, they have they have algorithms. They have all kinds of things in place. But it's not stopping the fact that people can get scammed. But a lot of times ACX will catch it before it gets too deep right so i don't know you know i don't work in the on amazon or audible or whatever but um there's something that will bring you know come to their attention and they'll look into it and say oh hold on this is not the author of this book so even if it's the author themselves that were like hold on somebody got has my book narrated hold on what's, what's up with this so either way acx will or audible um, yeah or audible will get a notification like okay well this is a scam and so now you as the person that got picked to narrate the book they have to send you an email and say we canceled your contract because that's all they're going to tell you they're not going to say hey hey um yeah a scammer came yeah tracks because they use our platform to scam you now, they're not going to tell you that. They're, oh, I hope my um, Wi-Fi didn't go out. But what they're going to tell you is we had to cancel this contract. Boom. That's all they're going to tell you. That's what everybody that has dealt with a scammer has told me is that, you know, they they found like a violation or, you know, something like that. Not with the author. I mean, not with the uh, narrator, but on the author's behalf. So they don't go into detail, but they will tell you we can't, we had to cancel your contract for this, you know. Uh, cause some, something is awry, you know? So, um, yeah, so ACX is not going to reimburse you. They just going to just cancel the contract and they're going to do it in a little sneaky way where they don't give you too many details. All right. Um, but real quick for, um, for those of you that are here, please, please, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate y'all. If y'all do that, I just, I, this is, I think this might be the longest live stream I ever did. Um, and also, let me see, um, I'm gonna drop it in the chat as well. It's also below this video. Um, uh, uh, okay. And so I'm putting this in the chat. And so that way I will have the link. In the chat as well if you're interested that's my audiobook narration course it's 35 percent off for a couple more hours and again i'm going to be closing registration to the course entirely soon so um yeah i will coach you and also you will have these training modules as well as my um five steps to newbie newbie to narrator ebook that's not available for sale i've actually 
had people reach out to me, like asking me, can I buy it? Like, no, you can't buy it. <laughs> it's not available on the market. All right. So, um, yeah, so there are plenty of exclusives in the course um, for my students only. So if you are like serious about audiobook narration or you want to get serious about it, then um, yeah, hit me up and uh, this is the chance to get it at a discounted price. Um, but if anybody, let, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, let me see. All right. Oh, okay. I see I have a slide here, like showing like an idea of the audiobook blue. Yeah. Um, just so y'all can see what, um, you know, just some of the things I've actually added things since I, I made this thing. So this is just some of the stuff that's available in the course. Um, but yeah, so, so far, um, I have five out of five stars. Everybody's giving me five stars. So my students love me. I appreciate everybody that that um, is a student of mine. And if any of my students happen to be watching this, uh, look out for an email from me because I have like some special announcements for y'all. Um, but um, yeah, Latoya, no problem. No problem. Let me um, remove this. Okay, there we go. All right. So um, yeah, so Latoya says, um, thanks for the information session. No problem. Um, but yeah, so I hope, I hope this information was helpful for you guys. Um, and don't forget that I do also have content on, on this YouTube channel of how to become an audiobook narrator. Like I outlined my entire journey, um, of like, basically it is not the way that I do it. Like a lot of people will think like, oh, it's just her giving information about audiobook narration. I do it in the realm of this is my journey. I'm walking you through it. So from the beginning um, where I'm like so happy I got a contract to, oh my God, this is crazy. You know, so my audiobook um, narration videos is a progression of the things that I learned and me sharing tips um, about, you know, things that I have learned from that. So um, so I hope this was helpful for you guys. And just like I do in my regular videos, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to peace out on this, this live stream. <laughs> and, um, and also for those of you that are not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications and set them to all. So you can get all my notifications. And matter of fact, I have a video coming out tomorrow that you won't want to miss. It's another money maker. So you don't want to miss that. So I'm putting money in your pockets feel free to like and share with people that you care about all right all right i'm ready to peace out on this live stream and i'm gonna see y'all very very soon bye y'all